Hey friends, welcome back to Codops Trek. Today, we are going to learn how to dockerize a Spring Boot application. We will see how to build, run, and push it to Docker Hub. This will add great value to your software journey, especially if you are just starting out. So, let's get started. In this tutorial, we will dockerize our student management application, which we have built from scratch in the previous video. You can check out that tutorial, along with how to set up MySQL in Docker, by clicking the i button above. Before we dive in, let's quickly go over the basics of student management. It's an application that helps manage student records through REST APIs we developed to perform CRUD operations. We built this in Java 17 using Spring Boot, and it uses MySQL as the database, which runs in Docker. Now, let's look at the code architecture. In the model package, we have the student class, which defines the structure of our student entity. The DAO layer contains the student repository, which is an interface extending JPA repository to handle database operations. In the service layer, we have the student service class, where the business logic resides. It interacts with the DAO layer to perform actions like adding, updating, and retrieving student records. Finally, the controller layer has the student controller class, which handles incoming API requests and sends responses. We also have the application.properties file, where we configure details like the MySQL database connection, port settings, and any other properties needed to run the application. Our Spring Boot application is up and running, so let's head to Postman to test the APIs. After dockerizing the application, we'll test them again to ensure everything works seamlessly. In Postman, we have a student collection containing all the CRUD APIs. Let's go through each of them step by step. First, we'll check the Save Student API, which uses the POST method. Here, we will add the student data in the request body and click Send. In response, we should receive the saved student data. Next, we'll look at our second API, Get All Students. This is a GET API that fetches all students from the database and returns a response as a list of students. Now, let's test our third API, GET STUDENT BY ID. This is also a GET API where we pass an ID, and it returns the student from the database with the matching ID if it exists. Next, we have our fourth API, the UPDATE STUDENT API, which uses the PUT method. We'll take a student from the get all students response, update their details, and then send the request. This API will return the updated student, and we can revalidate using the get all students API. Finally, we have the delete student API, which uses the delete method. This will remove a student from the database if they exist. Let's delete the second student and validate the change by calling the get all students API again. As you can see, the second student is no longer in the list. Before moving towards dockerizing our application, let's first understand how it runs without Docker. Right now, we have our PC, which we call the host system. Inside this host system, we have a network called the host network. Our MySQL database is running in a Docker container, and its default port 3306 is mapped to port 3309 of the host network. This network is referred to as the bridge network in Docker. This setup allows the database to be accessible via localhost 3309. Similarly, our Spring Boot application is running directly on the host network at port 8080, and since the database is mapped to localhost, our application can easily connect to the database using localhost 3309 and perform CRUD operations. Now, let's see what happens when we dockerize the application. Once the application is dockerized, it will run inside its own Docker container, just like the MySQL database. In this case, the Docker container becomes the host for the application. When the application tries to connect to the database using localhost, it will assume the database is running in the same container. However, since the database is actually running in a separate container, the connection will fail. To solve this, Docker provides a solution creating a custom Docker network. We will attach both the database and application containers to this custom network.
Instead of using localhost, the application will now connect to the database using the database container name. Another point to note, since the application will be connecting to the database via the database container name, we no longer need to map the database container's port to the host network. This frees up a port on the host for other users. However, we will still need to map the application container's port to the host so that the APIs can be accessed via localhost. So, here are the four steps to dockerize our application. First, update the database connection URL in the application.properties file by replacing localhost with the database container name. Second, we will build the jar file for our Spring Boot application. Third, we will create a Docker file in the root directory of the application. Finally, we will create a Docker image for the application. So, let's start by dockerizing our application. We are now in Eclipse, and we'll start with the first step, updating the database connection URL. So, let's open your application.properties file and find the property, spring.datasource.url. In our case, the database container name will be MySQL container, so we'll replace localhost with MySQL container. The updated URL should now look like this. Make sure that you spell the container name correctly, as it is case sensitive. Next, we'll build the jar file for our application. Right click on student management in Eclipse, select run as, and then click Maven build. A configuration form will appear. In the goals box, type package in lowercase. Then, check the box to skip tests, click apply, and finally hit run. Spring will now download all the required dependencies and build an executable jar file. Once the build is complete, you'll find the jar file inside the target folder. Now that we have built the jar file, let's move on to the next step, creating a Docker file. We'll create this Docker file in the root folder of our project. A Docker file is essentially a text document containing the instructions to package your application into a Docker image. Let's start by defining the base image and the steps we need. Here's the Docker file we will use. Let's go through each line. First step is to define base image. We are using an official OpenJDK 17 image with the Alpine Linux distribution. Alpine is a lightweight image, which helps reduce the overall size of our Docker image. Second step is to define working directory. This command sets app as the working directory inside the container. This means all subsequent commands in the Docker file will be executed in this directory. Third step is to copy student management jar file. Here, we copy the jar file we just built from the target folder in our local system to the app directory inside the container. Fourth step is to expose port 8080. This tells Docker that the container will listen on port 8080. We need this because our application runs on port 8080 and exposing it makes the container accessible on this port. Finally, fifth step is to define entry point. This command specifies what to execute when the Docker container starts. In this case, it runs our application using java-jar. Next, we are going to dockerize our application. Navigate to your project directory in your workspace where the Docker file is located. Open the terminal in this location. To dockerize our application, run the following command. docker build -t student management, colon version 1.1 dot. Make sure that the Docker image name is in lowercase, as Docker requires image names to be lowercase. The hyphen T flag allows us to tag the image with a name, student management, and version, v1.1. The dot indicates the current directory where Docker will look for the Docker file. This process will take a couple of minutes to create the Docker image. Once the image has been successfully built, you can verify by running. Docker images. You should see our student management image listed. Now that our Docker image is ready, it's time to run it. As per our earlier explanation, we will first create a Docker network, then run the MySQL container attached to that network, and finally run our Spring Boot application on the same network. Let's head over to our terminal to start dockerizing our application. Step 1. 
We will first create a custom Docker network so that both the MySQL database and our Spring Boot application can communicate within this isolated network. Run the following command to create the network. Docker network creates student management network. Once created, you can verify the network by running. Docker network ls. You should see student management network listed among the available networks. To inspect the network and view its details, run the following command. Docker network inspect student management network. This will display detailed information about the network, including the containers attached to it. Since we haven't attached any containers yet, the list will be empty for now. Next, we will create a MySQL container and attach it to the student management network which we just created. Run the following command to create and run the MySQL container. Our database container will create it in couple of moment. To verify that the MySQL container is up and running, you can run. Docker PS You should see the MySQL container in the list of running containers. Now, let's check whether the container is correctly attached to the student management network. To do this, run. Docker Network Inspect Student Management Network You should now see the MySQL container listed as attached to the network. Once the container is up, we'll create the student management database inside the MySQL container. First, access the MySQL terminal by running. Docker Execute in the interactive mode, MySQL container, bash. Then, log into the MySQL client, run. MySQL-U-Root-P root. Now, create the database by running. Create database student underscore management. You can verify the database has been created by running. Show databases. You should see student underscore management in the list. To switch to the database, run. Use student underscore management. At this point, if you run. Show tables. You won't see any tables because we haven't created any yet. Once we start our Spring Boot application, it will automatically create the required tables in the student underscore management database. Finally, we will run the student management Spring Boot application inside a Docker container. Run the following command to create and start the container. This command will create the student management container, attach it to the student management network, and map port 8080 from the container to port 8080 on the host system. It may take a couple of minutes for the container to start, depending on the system resources. Once the application is up and running, let's verify whether the required tables have been created in the MySQL database. First, access the MySQL terminal, then, check if the student table has been created by running. Show tables. You should see the student table in the list. To check if any data has been inserted, run. Select star from student. Since we haven't inserted any data yet, this query should return an empty result. Now, let's confirm that both the application and the MySQL database are attached to the student management network. Run the following command to inspect the network. Docker network inspect student management network. You should see both the MySQL container and the student management container listed under the network. At this point, We've successfully dockerized and run our Spring Boot application and MySQL database in Docker containers. Both containers are connected via a custom Docker network, allowing them to communicate with each other seamlessly. Now that we have our student management application running, we will proceed with testing the APIs to ensure that everything is working properly. We have a student management API collection that contains all the CRUD operations. So let's begin by testing the API to save a student in the database. We'll create a request body with the student's details, such as name, father name, mother name and date of birth, and send the request. In response, we should receive the student details along with an ID. To verify this, we'll log into the MySQL terminal, switch to our student management database, and run a select query to check if the student record is successfully saved. Next. We'll add a few more student records using the same API to test other operations. After inserting multiple students, 
we can test the API to fetch all students by sending a GET request to the endpoint. This will return a list of all student records stored in the database. Next, we'll test the update API. We'll start by fetching all student records using the Get All API and selecting a student to update. After choosing a student, we'll send a PUT request to the Update API, modifying the necessary details like the name or email. The API will respond with the updated student data, and we can verify the changes by calling the Get All API again to confirm that the updates have been applied correctly. Finally, we'll test the Delete API by removing the third student record. We'll send a delete request to the appropriate endpoint. The delete API doesn't return any data, but we can verify that the student has been successfully deleted by calling the Get All API again. You'll notice that the third student record is no longer present, confirming that the deletion was successful. That's how we can confirm that our dockerization was successful. By testing each API endpoint, adding, updating, fetching, and deleting students, we can see that the application is functioning properly within the Docker environment. Both the application and database containers are interacting seamlessly through the custom Docker network, proving that our setup is working as expected. Now, let's move toward the final part of our tutorial, pushing our Docker image to Docker Hub. Open your terminal and follow these steps. First, we need to tag our Docker image in the format, Docker Hub username, slash image name. In our case, it will be codopstrek slash student management colon v1.1. To do this, run following command. Next, we push the image to Docker Hub using the docker push command. Before pushing, ensure you are logged into Docker Hub by running docker login and entering your credentials. Once logged in, run the following command to push the image. Once the push is complete, you can verify it by checking your Docker Hub repository. The image should now be available under your account, ready for use or sharing. And that's how we have successfully dockerized our Spring Boot application, ran it inside a Docker container, tested all the APIs to ensure it's working properly, and finally pushed the Docker image to Docker Hub. If you found this video helpful, please like, share, and subscribe to Codopstrek. Stay tuned for more tutorials, and we will connect in the next video.